Welcome to Prayer Journaling through Basel Library. I am Michelle Williams, and I'm happy you joined us for session two. This session is titled Separating Wants and Needs. In the previous session, we talked about strength and weakness. We reviewed different types of prayer and heard some stories to help us understand how God can use our weakness to reveal strength. Let's think about our wants and needs. There are things we physically, emotionally, and spiritually need, and then there are those things we want. When we understand the difference, our prayers to God may change. One of the Ten Commandments that comes to mind when we think about our wants and needs is, Thou shall not covet thy neighbor. In this commandment, God asks us to be mindful of what we want. When the neighbor gets a new car, we may feel our own vehicle is inadequate, when in fact it may be better than the vehicle which kept breaking down five years ago. We suddenly forget the value we once held for our vehicle because now we're comparing it to the neighbor's new purchase. In the Old Testament, one of the greatest examples of choosing wants over needs is the story of King David and Bathsheba. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, we read the story of King David, who was hanging around his palace one day and from his rooftop spotted a woman who was bathing at a nearby home. She was extraordinarily beautiful, and he sent someone to find out who she was. The man reported back this was Bathsheba. She was the wife of Uriah, a soldier in King David's army, who was off fighting a war. King David decided he had to have her although he already had multiple wives of his own. Instead of the king being satisfied with what he had, he chose to have what he wanted, and what he wanted was someone else's wife. The story continued to reveal that Bathsheba became pregnant by King David, who then created an elaborate plan to cover up his indiscretions. He sent Bathsheba's husband to the front lines with the intention to kill Uriah, after receiving news Uriah was dead, the king brought Bathsheba to his palace and officially made her his wife, and she bore him a son. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, one of God's priests, Nathan, revealed to David what God's message was to him for making the choice of acting on his wants over his needs. God said, I made you king. I delivered you from your enemies. I gave you many wives, and if this were not enough, I would have given you even more. But you had Uriah killed and took his wife as your own. Now the sword will rule your house because of your choices. God wants us to think about the differences between our wants and needs. This requires mindfulness of our motivation, why we choose the things we do, the relationships we have, and the comforts we seek. Why do we seek this relationship? Why do we want that job? There are many times we want certain things because they make us feel good but may not be good for us. There are other times we want something so much we trick our brains into thinking that it's a true need. A need is something physically or socially required for our survival. Food, clothing, shelter, safety, water, and belonging or affection. A want is the desire to have something, whether it's an object or a relationship, anything not essential to our survival, but we put a value on it that makes it a desire. When we think about wants and needs, the best approach is to ask why. Do I seek this thing, this product, this item, this relationship? Do I need or want this? Our story this session is about the bumblebee and the honeybee. The honeybee receives a lot of attention in its value and its risk of endangerment. There are many organizations aimed at saving the honeybee, citing its vital role in our ecosystem. However, there's not much said about bumblebees. Bumblebees, like honeybees, live in colonies and are great pollinators for flowers and crops. They have a social hierarchy structure with worker bees and queens. Unlike the honeybees, Bumblebees only live for a season, with the exception of one single queen which hibernates during the winter and is the queen mother of the next season's hive. The queen lays eggs and creates worker bees, male and female, and one of the females becomes the queen mother bee for the following season. 
the remaining members of the hive die by late fall. Since only one member, the future queen, needs to survive through the winter, bumblebees do not produce honey. One of the reasons we may not hear much about saving the bumblebee is because the bumblebee only provides a need for the human species. It pollinates and is more efficient at pollinating than many other insects due to its fuzzy body and its use of vibration to fly. The honeybee, however, receives much more attention. Why? Consider this. The honeybee fulfills the need of pollination, but it also gives us something we want. Honey, a huge industry to provide people with a natural sweetener produced solely by the honeybees. The bumblebee produces nothing we want and only gives us something we need. Are we more selfish to focus on the honeybee rather than the bumblebee when it comes to conservation and preservation? Maybe it's something to think about. The focus may be the want more so than the need. When you ponder your own wants and needs, remember the bumblebee. In its one life cycle existence, providing pollination for our crops and flowers, fulfilling a need the same as the honeybee. God has a plan to provide us with care and cover our needs. God is also willing to hear the desires of our hearts, which we will talk about in session three. Like any caring and giving parent, God would love for his children to be happy with what he already provides. In this session, Journal about what God has already done to meet your needs. Make a list or write a story of a time when God revealed himself through meeting your needs. Finally, write a prayer of thanks to God for those needs already met. Think about how you live, how you are fed, and things you encounter during the day that add value to your life. This could be comforts in your home, a healthy and happy relationship, a job that provides financial stability for you and your family. Journal about these things to let God know you understand he is already providing for you. In session three, we will talk about our wish list. This is different than wants, which is desiring something attainable. A wish is the desires of our heart. We may feel like they're unattainable. God may reveal otherwise. We're happy you joined us for prayer journaling through Boslo Library. I hope you continue to find value in these lessons and are seeing a more open relationship with God. I also hope you see God working in you, around you, to help you become the person He created you to be. Mm -hmm.